today. Dylan is going to be uh, doing the sermon, as uh, some may or may not know, Joe Joy is in Romania. So uh, we're filling in today for her. So please join me in the call to worship. Hallelujah. Come and praise, you servants of God. Praise the name of Yahweh. to west, from north to south, praise the name of Yahweh. Who can compare to our God, seated high above the nations of the earth? God's glory fills the skies. Please join me in today's opening prayer. Blessed are you, Lord our God. Sunday through a Saturday, the youth is going on a mission trip to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I'm very, very excited because this is the first mission trip I've led, and I think one of the first youth trips that we've done in quite some time here. So I'm very excited about that. The ages for the trip is 7th grade through 12th grade, and that is 7th graders now through 12th graders now. Um, that would be, I already said the date. Oh, right, sorry. My mind's going everywhere today. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for being patient. I appreciate that. Next week, January 13th, from 12 to 1, we will be having a meeting about that said trip. And no deposit is necessary. You're not committed to going if you come next week, but you're just coming to hear more details. Um, however, on January 20th, I will be demanding that you need to pay a $50 deposit if you want to secure your spot on the trip. There's only 15 spots for youth. Um, so it is limited, but if more people want to join, we can probably make something happen. Also, Sunday, January 27th, Cabin Fever Fest. That is going to be in Fellowship Hall from 5.30 to 8 p.m. And that is an evening of just fellowship with food, fun, um, for all ages. So please come if you're interested in just coming to be with the body of believers. Now, I believe I'm going to have Julie come up and talk a little bit about Alpha. What's Alpha? Good question. Um, so I am Julie, and I am here as part of the discipleship team today. As part of the discipleship team today, and because hopefully back in September, you guys remember seeing a brochure like this, and it's not just a one-time brochure. This is a living, breathing thing that we're trying to do to keep encouraging people to be on a pathway, either to get on a path of growing your faith or to continue growing your faith or ask what what is faith wherever you are and that's really kind of what alpha is it is um, in our discipleship pathway it says that we were going to do it in january beginning in january and i really find that it's not a coincidence at all i think it's a god at work that we have <coughs> some new folks to our church that have actually done alpha and are excited to be leaders for it and so part of what I wanted to do today is we're going to watch a video in just a second, but after the video, Judith Kim is going to come up and going to share some of what her experience has been with Alpha. And I want you to put a name with her face. She's going to be one of our leaders, and I just think we're so blessed to have her here and excited to be part of this with our church. And so Judith has been coming to our church from Ankeny. Um, she was there before, which we kind of feel a connection there. We came from the Ankeny Church as well. Jim and I did several years ago. And so um, 
Judith is just a blessing to our church. So you'll hear from her in just a minute, um, but we just really want you um, to know that we're excited about it. There's a training that Judith and I are going to go to on Thursday night this week, so if anyone is feeling a nudge this morning on your heart, if you let us know, we'd be glad to take you along to the training, and then you'll know even more. So here's a video to let you know. Life moves fast, doesn't it? Every day there is so much to fit in. Do you ever stop and think? What's the point of it all? Do you ever ask yourself, is there more to life than this? Alpha is a series of sessions exploring life, faith, and meaning. It's a space to explore the big questions, to say what you think, and hear other people's points of view. First up, there's food, then a talk, followed by a discussion. Each talk explores a different aspect of the Christian faith. And then in the small group, you get to say exactly what you think. The aim of the talk is to spark conversation, each week unpacking a different question. There's no obligation to say anything, and there's nothing you can't say. Seriously. It's an opportunity to hear from others and contribute your own perspective in an honest, friendly and open environment. Why not try it out? Hello. Um, I was so excited when I got the brochure last fall and saw that the church is going to be offering an Alpha Step series. Um, alpha beautifully uh, fulfills several of the, path, the discipleship pathway goals, um, including worship, grow your faith, serve, and share. For me, um, the ex my excitement stemmed from the fact that I was able to participate in two separate um, Alpha sessions at the Ankeny Church in 2011 and 2014. And I think through that I've become kind of an Alpha junkie in that if there's an opportunity for me to take another Alpha course, I'm the first one to sign up. And I am very happy to be able to be one of the co-leaders of um, the session at the church this year. Um, the program um, has profoundly uh, given me spiritual nourishment, and it's revitalized and renewed my relationship with Jesus. And it did that through exploring the gospel, through prayer, and through experiencing the presence of Christ in a powerful way. The program meets you wherever you are in your faith journey. It's wonderful for young people who have a lot of questions. It's great for older people like me who have had a long time in um, Bible studies and attending church, but can benefit from, uh, again, this renewal that I certainly experienced. So we hope that you will come and see um, the first introductory session of Alpha will be January 21st uh, in the Fellowship Hall at 6 o'clock, and we will start with a dinner at the first uh, meeting. Um, after that, every Monday, Alpha will take place on, um, in the Fellowship Hall or another space in the church starting at 6.30, and we'll have desserts. Come and see about Alpha. I really believe that it, it would be a great way for you to make another step in your path to grow your faith. Thank you. Now it's the time for our pastoral prayer. And uh, let's go ahead and start this by uh, praying silently to ourselves and taking our uh, 
joys and concerns and thankfulness to the Lord. So, go ahead and let us pray. Yeah, yes. <laughs> you think like 
Oh, the, <laughs> the, the well-dressed man definitely gets happier over. Okay, kids who live in the desert. Kids who live where there's cornfields. Cornfields. Kids don't, oh, look at this one. The person that rides around on a brand new bike, the person that rides or gets to drive around in this car. This is amazing looking car. <laughs> Dylan's always our tiebreaker. He's at the bike, gets happy, that brand new car. Okay, and last one. This great, big, beautiful house for my little pencil etching of a little tiny house.
And I don't know about you guys, but for me, getting a brand new Christmas tree right after Thanksgiving is like so happy and like it's awesome because you're getting this Christmas tree. And then it comes to the now, like yesterday for us, and there's this dead tree that needles fall off all over your house. You can't vacuum them up because then they get stuck in the vacuum. And then you end up stabbing your feet, stabbing your hands. And you, it's just terrible. So the happiness to get the tree turns into kind of like, well, this sucks. Um, I want you guys to take 30 seconds to think of a time in your life when you just experienced pure happiness. What emotions you felt, what memories were created, what was involved. It can be from sitting on a beach drinking a cold drink. It can be Christmas morning opening presents. It can be anything. So take 30 seconds to think of something that makes you happy. to us today uh, through the scripture we just read and even through the hymns and through, through my words God, I ask that you to speak through me through the Holy Spirit um, God we're, we're going to focus on true freedom today and what it means to have true freedom and I ask that you would teach every one of us what it means to be truly free and to be truly joyful thank you God for today thank you for the weather thank you for our friends our family our community we're able to worship together thank you for it all Amen. So, I directly, when I think of that, something that makes me happy, I, when I was a kid, all I wanted for Christmas when I was in fourth grade, all I wanted was a drum set. This bright blue, shiny drum set that I thought was the coolest thing, and I swore that if I got that drum set for Christmas, I was going to be the world's best drummer, next to John Bonham and, and Neil Peart and all the guys from classic rock bands and stuff. And that's like, that was my dream. And then I got this drum set from Santa, and I played it for about a week, and then it just kind of sat in my basement for a long time collecting dust, and then it, half of it ended up in my parents' attic, the other half kind of just ended up who knows where, and my one, my one time beautiful drum set, shiny, brand new, became rusty and broken and busted and it wasn't, it's not even usable anymore. Same thing with the tree, it was, I had this brand new Christmas tree in November and now it's just this old piece of wood with needles that hurt me, that I hate. So happiness comes and goes. I mean, we all experience times in our life where we're excited, we're happy, we're happy to be alive and then what happens when those moments disappear? What, what happens when those happy moments turn into not so happy moments? Um, I think we've all experienced them in our own different ways. And I have a few that I'm going to talk about a little later. But just going over Philippians. So Philippians, a little context to give you guys. Paul is the author, and he was writing to a group of people who are Christians. Um, this book is often referred to as Paul's joy letter because in the short four chapters he refers to joy and rejoicing uh, I think 16 times. So he's all about rejoicing, all about being joyful, all about focusing on what truly matters. Which is uh, really ironic because do you know where Paul was when he wrote this letter? He was in prison. He was in chains. He was in probably one of the least happy places he can imagine. Maybe not. He, Paul went through a lot of stuff. Paul was, at times he experienced extreme poverty, where he didn't have any money. He experienced times in his life where he was wealthy and had all that he needed. Times that he was hungry, he had a full stomach. Um, he was hungry and times he had a full stomach. There was times where his, he was on a ship traveling and they made it safely to shore. And there was other times where his ship was shipwrecked. Multiple times. Paul is... Uh, Honestly, no stranger to, to suffering. 
So I think it's fair to say that Paul, that anybody can tell us that if you can be joyful in moments of suffering, you can be joyful always. So, freedom, joy. I, the, I titled my message today, True Freedom, but I, Leanne mentioned being happy, and I mentioned the word joy a lot. Joy comes from our true freedom. And where does our true freedom come from? It comes from the blood of Jesus Christ being shed for us on the cross. And then, of course, repenting of our sin and saying, Jesus, forgive me. That's where our freedom comes from. So Paul, in Philippians 1, I'm going to read it again. You don't have to put it on there. I'll just read it myself. He says, I, I pray that your love will overflow more and more and that you will keep on growing in this knowledge and understanding. For I want you to understand what really matters. So that you may live pure and blameless lives until the day of Christ's return. May you always be filled with the fruit of your salvation, the righteous character producing your faith, your life by Jesus Christ. For this will bring much glory and praise to God. Where does our true joy come from? It comes from knowing that we have a hope in our salvation. Knowing that today, today might suck, to be frank. Today might be full of suffering. We might have disease. We might have broken relationships. We might experience death loss of people we love. But even in the times where life is not so great, we know that our eternity is going to be way better and it's going to be full of peace and joy. Focus on what truly matters. And then you would always, and he says, I pray that you would always be filled with the fruit of your salvation, which is the righteous character produced in your life by Jesus. So when we like I was saying earlier, when we repent and we live the life Jesus wants us to live, the life of following Him, we're able to enter a life of joy. That's the whole purpose of this letter, is Paul saying, you are able to live a life of joy even when your life is not going so well. Which is, I think our human nature tends to go opposite. Have you, has anybody ever seen Saturday Night Live, a and all? Raise your hands if you've ever seen it. So not everybody. There, there's a skit called uh, Debbie Downer. Does anybody raise your hands if you've seen that one? So forgive me for this, but I'm going to sing. And you can join if you want. I, I have nothing against that. <laughs> so Debbie Downer, you're enjoying your day. Everything's going your way. Then along comes Debbie Downer. I was here to tell you about a new disease, a car accident, or killer bees. You better you spare you, Debbie, please. But you can't stop Debbie down there. You, you snap for it, and then the end's like, wah, wah. She's like, <laughs> they, if you've never seen the skit, she, they're sitting at a table and all the skits, there's multiple of them. And one I think about is when they're at Disney World and everyone's so excited to be there and they just got in there and they're getting dinner. And uh, one of the characters says, oh, I'll take a steak and fries. And then Debbie Downer comes in with this really negative comment about how there's some infectious disease with meat and how she's afraid she's going to die because she's going to eat the meat. She's like, you should just go something more safer. And then the entire conversation goes on for five, ten minutes, and it's all negative. It's all like this, that, this, that. Um, if you go on a roller coaster at Disney World, you're probably going to die, and stuff like that. And it's all negative. It's all focusing on the stuff that can't go well. And it might be a little over-exaggeration, but I think all of us have done that at some point in our life. I know I have. Paul, in Philippians 4, 11 through 13, I didn't make a slide for this. He says, For I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living life in every situation, whether it is on a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little, and you've all heard this one, for I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I think it's really easy to say, to complain, and to focus on what's going bad, and be the Debbie Downer. Paul says, focus on truly what matters. 
His circumstance was not ideal. He was in prison. He was in chains. He wanted to go free. He wanted to go and spread the gospel. So he, he dedicated his life to preaching the gospel, and now he's in chains. So his entire life's work is put to a halt because he because he's literally in chains. But he says, rejoice, knowing that your future is secure, your eternity is secure, because of Jesus Christ. That's why you can have true joy. Our circumstance doesn't have to determine how happy we are or how happy we aren't. We can choose to be joyful when we are facing the hard times. And, and James has a really interesting perspective on this too. James chapter 1 this is not on the slides either. It says, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow, for when your endurance is fully developed, you'll be perfect and complete, needing nothing. He has a really interesting perspective, because he says, when you have trials... For instance, when you're in prison, or maybe when a loved one dies, maybe when you're, you have a job that you don't necessarily want to be in, the struggle you're facing to push through, take that as an opportunity to have faith and to have to choose joy, knowing that today sucks, but you know what? My eternity is better. When I was in high school, um, I, I experienced a time of, of struggle, which was an addiction to pornography, and I had my a really strong conviction that God had asked me to stop doing what I was doing. And I, it was through my saying, "Oh God, you've asked me to do this, and I haven't done it in the past, but this time I'm going to obey you." And through my obeying, through repenting, through continuing to fight through it and having hope that, you know what, it might suck right now, but God's going to pull me through, my eternity's better. I was able to overcome that addiction. My, at the same time, my mother was going through breast cancer. She praised God. She made it through it. She's alive, able to breathe today. In the last four years, I, I've experienced, I think, about ten people that I love pass away. And that's close friends. That's friends I haven't seen in a while. That is my cousin, a, a best friend, and my brother. The Christian life is not promised to us to be easy whatsoever. And it's really interesting because I've heard it said before that if you follow Jesus, that everything's going to be perfect and you'll just you'll be able to live life however you want to live and everything's going to be perfect. That's not true at all. I don't see that anywhere in the Bible and I don't experience that for myself. Because I, after becoming a true believer of Christ, I have gone through the most difficult things. God can use those struggles to give us strength. It's interesting because I found myself praying over and over again, God, please change the situation. Please change my circumstance. Please take it away. But it's in those circumstances that I was struggling the most that God used them to change me. There is a purpose for everything that we go through, even if it means struggling through it. For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. It's not our responsibility to be strong enough to get through the, the trial. Why? Because we're given Jesus, we're given the Holy Spirit, we're given guidance through the Bible, through, through the Spirit whispering to us, how God uses and speaks to us in mysterious ways. So, um, to be frank, life's going to suck sometimes. But we can be content and joyful even when it does because we have the hope knowing that we have salvation. It's not a hope that I hope the Cubs are going to win the World Series. It's hope knowing for sure that I'm going to be saved for eternity. I know it for certain. That's what that hope is. Mm, so good. Thank you, Lord. And this joy that I'm talking about from the true freedom we receive in salvation comes from knowing Christ personally and depending on His strength rather than our own. Let's pray. God, thanks for this message. Thanks for 
Thanks for the struggle. Even when it's hard, even when it sucks, it, you have been faithful in the past to save us, to push us through, to pull us through, and you remind us even when things are not going our way, the ideal situation is not in front of us. We know that we have your grace and your hope and, and, and the hope in your future that you give us in eternity. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Peace of God that surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Now go forth in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.